Got another video for the paper three questions playlist. So this one focuses on practical skills, mole calculations, and the establishment of a mole ratio. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So you'll notice I've highlighted this line in step two, set up apparatus for gas collection. Well, that's because in part A, we've got to draw a label diagram for suitable apparatus. So you can either go for the gas syringe um, method to collect the gas, so a container for the acid metal to, to react in, so a conical flask is suitable there. Um, make sure that you've got a completely sealed conical flask so that only the gas can only escape into the gas syringe. A closed system is another way of calling that. So you could use that method or you could do the collection over water method. So instead of a gas syringe, you're um, collecting the gas in this upside down measuring cylinder. Moving on to part B where we've got to analyse the student's results and ultimately establish the mole ratio uh, in the equation so we can decide which equation 1 to 3 is correct. So the first thing we're going to do is work out the moles of the europium used and the moles of hydrogen produced. So starting with the europium, the mass of europium comes out at 0.988 grams. Obviously the two mass readings, it's the difference between those. So that means the moles of europium, mass over MR, 0.0065. And then moving on to the moles of hydrogen, so 152 cm cubed were collected, and we're assuming that the conditions are RTP. So if we divide that by the molar gas volume in centimetres cubed, so 24,000, we can calculate the moles of hydrogen produced, 0.00633. So you can see these are very, very close together. So we're going to assume that's approximately a one-to-one -one ratio, which means that equation two is the correct equation. So moving on to part C, where the student's done the same thing but used concentrated hydrochloric acid instead of dilute, and we're told that the reaction of the apparatus gets hot. So what's that going to do? Well, it's going to make the hydrogen gas expand and so we're going to record a higher volume of hydrogen. So when we calculate the moles of hydrogen, we're going to have a higher number in the numerator term on this fraction. So we're going to get a greater number of moles of hydrogen calculated. Now the students still use the same mass of europium, so the ratio between the europium to hydrogen is going to increase. Now, what we've already said is enough to get those two marks, but the question could have added an extra mark on and said, which equation is the student likely to go for? Well, it's going to be equation three because that's got a higher europium to hydrogen ratio. So finally, part D, where we've got to use this modified method and explain how it can be used or the results of this can be used to get to the right equation. You'll notice that I've written up the three possible hydroxide precipitation reactions. So if equation one had been correct, you would have got this hydroxide of europium, equation two, equation three. Now the thing to bear in mind is these will all have a different MR. So the students using 0.01 moles of europium, so therefore they would ultimately generate 0.01 moles of the hydroxide in each case. So using the MR, moles times MR, you can calculate the mass expected of the hydroxide precipitate. So if equation one was correct, you should get that many grams of precipitate. Equation two, that many grams. Equation three, that many grams. So all I would say there is compare the mass of precipitate formed to the expected mass. 